Hey folks, David Fine here from Keys Mods. I've got another tropical bug in my hands. This is a little bit less of an exciting bug and a little bit more of a common bug, um, but it is one that we confuse with some of our more rare species down in Florida Keys. This is the Mournful Sphinx, annual lugubris, and it is a bug that we find actually occasionally in the Florida Keys and we're gonna tell you what we know about the Mournful Sphinx as it exists in the Florida Keys in South Florida. Uh, you guys, check out this bug, check out the video, and we're gonna tell you what we know about the Mournful Sphinx. And uh, we also are big on education here at Keys Moz, and so we want you to check out our website, keysmoz.com, where we've got all 600 mods of the Florida Keys there, a photograph for you so you can see them and all the information that we're gonna share here with you about the Mournful Sphinx and all other 600 species from the Florida Keys is there on our website. So check out the website, links in the description. But also we want you to get into community around the study of Lepidoptera and the butterflies and moths of the Southern United States. And for that reason, we are pointing everybody at the Southern Lepidoptera Society. And I got their website linked in my description and you can join the Southern Lepsoc for a very, very reasonable fee. And um, you get newsletters and you get to meet really, really cool and knowledgeable people that can help you find awesome bugs. So guys, but without further ado, let's get to a, a discussion on Ennio Lugubris, the Mournful Sphinx. Let's check it out. All right, our guest of honor is the Mournful Sphinx. And one of the characteristics of this moth uh, is that it, it is actually a dimorphic sphinx species, which means that the males and females actually look different. And very few sphingids are actually dimorphic. Sometimes it's very difficult to tell the boys and the girls apart. But in this species, they have some very, very unique um, characteristics that you can identify them in. Obviously, the females have that big, huge abdomen where they store all their eggs. But if you don't have the big, thick abdomen, maybe the females laid eggs already. There are a few other characteristics that we're going to show you right now. How to tell the difference between the boys and the girls. First of all, the females have the very pronounced spot on the forewing. Okay, very, very pronounced spot. The males have that spot but it's not as highlighted as it is in the female. So that's one difference that you can tell. The female's almost got like a highlight around that brown spot there. It's kind of highlighted, right? The second characteristics is more on the male that, that both species, uh, both the male and the female have a, a line that come kind of comes down in the middle of the forewing from top to bottom, right on the left side of that spot. But the male, has a much more exaggerated line. Okay, a much more exaggerated line. And that are two, those are two of the main differences. The wing shape is a little different, but the color is very similar. They call it the mournful sphinx, obviously because of its drab, dull colors, that would be indicative of somebody that would be mourning the loss of a loved one. They would wear dark colors to a funeral or something like that. Um, so that's the idea behind the name, I believe. But this species has several similar species down here in South Florida and Florida Keys. And I'll show you a couple of them. When at rest, let me zoom out. When at rest, the mournful sphinx will cover its hind wings, as does the half blind sphinx, which would cover those cool little orange yellow spots as does the Sagra Sphinx, which would also color those little cool yellow, yellow stripes. So when, when these species right here are at rest, they're going to be very, very similar looking to the half blind, or to the mournful Sphinx. And you'd probably need to take a really close look to tell them apart, especially the male, I would say, it can look pretty similar to some of these other small brown Sphinx moths, okay? We find them, flying at uh, flowers in the crepuscular hours, like the twilight hours right before the sun goes down. 
Uh, I have grew up with a papaya tree in my yard, a male papaya tree with all the little tiny yellow blossoms. These things love male papaya blossoms. And I would I remember, remember always seeing um, lugubris, uh, annual lugubris, the mournful sphinx, flying around those papaya blooms. Also, night blooming jasmine, I found them on, oh gosh, a bunch of different things. They actually are readily... Um, fly. They re readily come to nectar at twilight hours, and you can find them nectaring, uh, much like a hummingbird. Um, they, they have a pretty strong flight. They can be very fast, um, but if you're if you're ready and you know what the flower is, you can see them nectaring. Uh, they also readily come to lights. We actually see them quite regularly down here in buildings and gas stations and uh, shopping center walls because they will go. Uh, be attracted to the lights, the UV lights that those shopping centers would use. And um, and we can see them hanging on the walls there. And we see them at gas stations down the Florida Keys and shopping centers as well. Uh, we have found them quite regularly on at our artificial lights during our research down the Florida Keys. In fact, let's go to the website and find out what our experience has been with the Mournful Sphinx in the Florida Keys. And so, Enya lugubris, the mournful sphinx, uh, we got our caterpillar there. We feed, find them feeding on Virginia creeper and uh, muscadine grape. And so, I, I think they eat a multiple multitude of different grape vines. I think they'll eat possum grape and cissus and things like that. Um, but that's the caterpillar right there, guys. They got the little classic sphinx moth looking horn. Here you can see the difference between the boy and the girl on the website. Uh, we have found them on many islands, Key Largo, Bahia Honda, Big Pine, no name. And um, But here's a strange thing, not in every month. You know, we've only found them typically in the, in the spring and then in December. That December month would be at flowers at those Eupatorium Christmas flower blooms that we find on the side of the road in disturbed areas down in Key Largo. Uh, you know, in, on the mainland, we see uh, we see that they can be very common. However, in the Florida Keys, we have not seen them very commonly, and we've only found a few of them in the Florida Keys, but um, we find them can be, they can be somewhat abundant in the Florida mainland. So that is our experience with this species in the Florida Keys. It's not a tremendous amount of information on the species. Um, they are widely distributed. They have multiple different host plants in the same grape vine family. And, you know, it's a cool bug. So, but that guy, that's about all we have for the mournful sphinx. Okay, folks, hope you enjoyed that video on the mournful sphinx. It is, again, not the most exciting bug, but... It is one, another sphinx moth species that we have in South Florida. And so, tons of bugs down here in South Florida, and we want to show you all of them. So, one by one, we're going to go through the moths and butterflies of South Florida and Florida Keys. So, if you like the video, please, 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 please give me a thumbs up. Helps out our channel when you like our videos. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss out when we post Cool videos on butterflies and moths of South Florida. So guys, take care. Let's get out there and let's find some cool tropical beauties. Well, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, I guess. The Enyo lugubris sphinx, the morning sphinx, I think it's pretty. Let's go find some. Take care, guys.